you've lost your sponsorship, you're not feeling confident, how do we have the corner scut sitting in front of us today? That match is Taylor at his best, to be fair. 109.90, 110 average. I, mean, I, I practice from 9 to 5 every day. 8 hours a day. I have no natural talent at all. I used to flick my big brass darts into the boards and stuff. That's a good one. How many nines do you hit on practice? But it was just, it was just. I've always had, a, I've always struggled with confidence. That's my biggest problem. Lovely to talk to you, first of all. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course, no, no problem at all. I was very shocked actually when I added you, and you knew who I was. To be fair, <laughs> yeah. do you actually watch? My, do you, go on. Pardon? Do you actually watch the the channel? Don't you? Yeah, I actually watch it. Yeah, I go through um the basics. That's awesome. So, you know, which sounds really strange, but it's those. It's it's the keeping it simple. Yeah. That, that a lot of people forget, and sometimes you need a little reminder. So I flick through to episode one about like standing straight and following through and stuff like that, and letting your hand print fall naturally rather than pointing the, at the target and stuff like that. So I say that sort of stuff in my head, but sometimes when you get like an outsider saying it. It helps a little bit if that makes sense. I totally agree. And do you know what? The strange thing is, sometimes I watch my videos back and I learn something. I feel like I've learned it. I know it, but sometimes hearing it out loud, like you say, it, it's, it does help. It reinforces it. Exactly. My, 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 my manager, Brian, is brilliant for that. He, um, like, I, because I've left eye dominant, I have a tendency to stand to the left of the dartboard sometimes. Yeah. And he's constantly like, just move right, move to the right, move to the right a little bit. Because he can see behind me how my dart's going for the air, whether I'm standing where I should be standing or not. That's, that's where, where, where the eye dominance comes in, that eye wants to be um, over over more to the left, which is strange. That's unbelievable. Yeah, you get a lot of, of pro. I've actually had a few pros now saying they've got bad habits. Like uh, Steve Beaton says, he leans into the shot sometimes too much. And it's only people who really know his game that can tell him after the game, you're leaning in too far. Yeah, yeah. Like what my manager Brian would be able to tell me. He would be able yeah. to tell me straight away. This is why I think we need more coaching in darts, personally. I think it's, you've got to find someone who knows your game inside and out. I think that will happen eventually. That's the biggest issue with coaching. Like I think my manager Brian is probably one of the only managers where, say if I'm on stage or something or playing a game, I can look behind me and he'll do something like with his hands, or whatever, and I know exactly what he means. Yeah. Whether it's a little bit quicker, a little bit slower, or calm down for two seconds, like just just something because he knows he's been watching, he knows my game. Yeah. But I think a coaching for darts is it's really individual. Unless yeah. you want to talk uh like mechanics and stuff, is you can do that to pretty much anyone. But sometimes teaching someone the mechanics doesn't always work. Totally. Because some like I've I've done it in the past where I've done um, a little bit of coaching when I was a lot younger, like for darts and stuff like that. I'd done it at uh, Riley's Victoria yeah. ages and ages ago, and I've turned someone to follow through, but they'd had an injury, so they couldn't. That's unbelievable. So where, so where they've had a tendon problem or whatever, they can't follow through. So, like some coaching doesn't work for everyone. It's really strange. Yeah. So by the end, I, I rather than following through, I just have to tell him to let his hand just like fall, sort of thing. So yeah. it's it's almost like a follow through. So yeah. it's sort of stopping there, but his hand was going through as well. So it's all, almost like he's gone all the way through his muscles. Gotta use the can. wrist then. You gotta use the wrist and the fingers. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta try and find the power you can. Like even if it's like pull your wrist a bit further back, like cock your wrist and then you go forward. Just just get the power where you can if you can't use your arm completely. Definitely. No, I totally think that. So, yeah, I think it, it's strange that you've got other sports like your darts and uh, other than darts of boxing or golf. Yeah. But the coach will always be very individualised. You know, he'll know that player's game inside and out as well as, as the conditions they're playing under. And I think that, yeah. that's something that will happen in time. Yeah, with, with a lot of one-on-one sports, it, 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 it has to be an individual thing because it's not just the mechanics you've got to go through. It's the mindset of it all like you were saying with your, your manager Brian so he's the only manager you, that you know of that would actually coach you during a game knows your throw he's the only person that I've I've seen slash know of that goes 
yeah, just do this. Like, Where did he learn really from? Has he just been very close with you for a number of years, or is it someone who just takes a big interest and in, goes to all your games? Or I've been, been close to him for for a number of years. I mean, I first met Brian at a summer league when I was back when I was sponsored by Unicorn. So that's what's that? How many years ago? Now? I was twenty, so six years ago. Wow. And I, I was talking to him then, and he said, "Well, if you when the Unicorn Sportship finish finishes, if they want if if." They're not going to offer another year or whatever, extend it. Give me a shout. But after the contract finished, I wasn't I wasn't very confident in my game, so I had I call it a year off, but I still done a couple of other things. And then I said I I got back practicing properly and stuff again. I said I think I'm ready to like, sort of get back into it if you want to do the sponsorship thing. And we started doing it, and the more and more we spent time with each other and stuff like that, like we used to play Super League on a Tuesday night together as well. So he had a good idea from watching my games and all that sort of stuff, what I needed to do and what I don't need to do. Yeah, that's awesome. How did you bounce back from that then? So you've taken, a, you've lost your sponsorship. You're not feeling confident. How do we have the Connor Scott sitting in front of us today? Um, I, I've always been a massive practicer. Like I'll, I'll say I've I've had a year off or whatever, but it wasn't. I still practiced because that that's always been my my little thing. Like. I can't sit there and play like games for hours and hours. I'm not into football. I'm not into anything like darts is my it's my <laughs> thing. So sit, sitting in my bedroom practicing for hours is what I did for fun. So yeah. I just sort of kept doing it, kept doing it, and then I think I done a couple of development tours, like in and around that sort of time, just to see where I was at. Wasn't there yet, um, but local leagues and stuff like that. Like I was getting better and better and better. But it was just, it was just. I've always had, a, I've always struggled with confidence. That's my biggest problem in darts. Like my, my mechanics and stuff are all good, my throws yeah. are good. Because every now and again, my confidence goes. Okay, so we've got to talk about your improvements. One hundred and nine point nine zero against Jack Main. That match is Taylor at his best. To be fair, one hundred and nine point nine zero, one hundred and ten average. How, how did you get that good at darts? Um. A lot of time. I mean, I, I, I practice from nine to five every day. Some people say that's not possible. People people say that's not possible. Like I do eight hours a day. Eight hours a day. Yeah, I treat it like a job. So if if say when I used to work as a, at a restaurant and stuff like that, I was doing twelve hour shifts at a restaurant. When I was a plumber, you work eight hours a day. What am I going to do all day long if not practice? It's my job. How talk me through your practice routine? Eight hours a day, my arm would drop off. Um, I mean, you could probably take you could probably take it down for like twenty minutes, half hour. Probably take twenty minutes, half hour of that for like lunch and stuff like that, or get myself like coffee or whatever. But um, my I, I vary it. If there's something I think I'm struggling on, then I'll work on it till I'm blue in the face. So I'll play a lot of one two ones. Yeah. I've got the Scolia system now, which who you sponsored I'm, by? Who I'm now sponsored by, but uh, my manager Brian uh, got me it a while ago to like help me practice and stuff. So I do a lot of like stuff on there. Like I think it's the Go Darts Pro app. Yeah, I use that sometimes. I play a lot against Neil Birkin on there. I've seen that. I practice, I practice with him a lot. Um, just there, there's lots of like little things that I do during the day. I do round the clock on doubles, and some days I'll just see how many 180s I can hit in a day. When you go round the clock on doubles, do you just try and get two in each time, or do you, do you have you tried the version I put up? You got to get three at each, just three at each target, and then keep your score. I, try, I tried that years ago. Years ago, when, like before you move on, you try and get uh, two in there or three in there each time. Yeah, I've always been sort of like, well. I'll have three at each, and if I miss, I'll go back to the start, or I'll go back. So, say if it, if it's a close miss, like you know yourself when you're practicing. Yeah. Some some days you'll be really really strict on yourself, and other days you'll be like, right, I I I lean off this. Exactly, exactly. It's got to be somewhat enjoyable, otherwise there's no point in. Yeah, doing you can't punish yourself. Yeah, no, you're standing at a board eight hours a day, like berating yourself the whole time it's it's yeah. not good for you totally totally agree and you know that's why i like just having three dust double and three dust double and three dust double if i hit it or i miss it i move on 
Otherwise, yeah. I find I'm almost trying to change my throw to hit the target. If I'm That's what I do. I'll, I'll do that. I'll go, I'll go, right, what, what am I doing? A little bit harder. If I fight a little bit harder, it'll be fine. If I spin my dart a little bit on the way back, it might twist more and go in. Like, it's just stupid stuff that you don't exactly. need to be thinking about. You can't have a one a different throw for every target. No, you can't. I mean, there was an old rumor going around. I don't know if it is true or not, but Peter Wright apparently used to change. He changes uh, where his fingers are positioned on the barrel for certain doubles or something he used to do years ago. I, I heard that. I don't know if I quite believe it, but I heard that. Yeah, yeah. I've heard it. But it, to be fair, the way he sort of is with the game, I could believe it. I've, I've been a big. I'm a big believer of if I can grip it, I can throw it. I'm, I'm one of those people. If, if, as long as it, the dart, I can grip the dart in my hand, doesn't matter the shape, the weight, I can throw the dart most of the time. But if That's I can't cool. grip it comfortably, then I can't throw it. Like I can the unicorn, relate to that, like, actually. Uh, the unicorn bag is 19 grams. Now I use a 22. 19? Jeepers. So that was your uh, your first signature, 19 grams. <laughs> That was my first signature barrel. It was based off of a 19 gram Andy Fordham bar, which is here. Very, I had a set of those actually, the gold ones. Yeah, gold yeah. ones. That, that was the first set of darts I ever had 90 average with. Really? Oh, I had a set yeah. of those in 22, I think it was, yeah. As soon as we're going back in time, why don't you tell me your earliest memory of darts? That would either be playing my granddad Joe. When he come round to our house or playing my brother, brother, yeah, he, that's that's who got me into the game. Is I wouldn't okay. be playing if it wasn't for him because he's like my mum and dad don't play darts, don't really know an awful lot about darts. My granddad Joe played years and years ago, um, and my brother Joe, <laughs> um, he played local leagues and stuff like that. Then went to Super League and County. He, he was a pretty decent dart player, but. Um, so the the original thing was I used to go in his room and annoy him. I just <laughs> want to play darts all the time. So when he left the house, I'd sneak into his room and play darts. He went to work on a fishing lake for a couple of years because he's big into his fishing. He went he went to work there for a few years, and in that time, when he come back, I was I was a bit better. Good. But I I had full access to the dartboard. I didn't have How one. How then? Young. Really, really young. I mean, when, when people ask me how long I've been playing darts, I normally say I started when I was 14, 15, and I'm 26 now, so say 11, 12 years. But wow. back then, back then I, I, I was probably only 12, 13, but I wouldn't really say I was playing darts. I was just... Chucking. Just, yeah. 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 I know what you mean. Yeah, that was me. I was like 11, and I was just throwing at a, a border attached to a shed yeah. in a freezing cold. But I wasn't really playing. I don't know what I was doing. I was just yeah, throwing them, just, hoping hit the board like. Just throwing them, no natural talent at all. Used to flick my big brass darts into the boards. Also, another thing I was going to ask you: natural talent. You, you didn't have any, you see. No, I, I, I was never any good at any other sports. So I had no hand-eye coordination to be good at it. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I was, I was always, I always had to work hard at everything. You know, nothing came easy. Yeah. I always, I always played like a little bit of rugby at school. I played for the school team for a little while and stuff like that, but not for long. And I weren't very good at it. No one ever gave me the ball or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just to walk about and chat. <laughs> yeah. Sounds familiar to my school years, to be fair. Yeah. When did you realise you could become a pro then? Um... I wouldn't say it was a it was a realization. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. My goal in darts has always been the same, and it wasn't to be a tour card holder, be world number one, be a world champion, or anything or any of those things. My goal for darts was just to be able to make a living out of it. That's that, mental, though. To, how can, see to make a living out of it? Surely you need to be pretty proficient that you've got to be able to compete with the best in the world at least you've got to be able to compete and my thing's always been i, I put in hard work that that's always been my thing like so if, say if i worked uh, a stupid hour shift at like doing the chefing job that i was doing i used to practice as soon as i got home whether it was 12 o'clock at night or not uh when i was with my dad plumbing what, what, no, no matter what time we got in, I'd still go league darts in an evening. I wouldn't not go because I was tired. 
I, I wouldn't do that. It was just constant. If I'm working harder than someone else is, then it should be enough. It's a lovely attitude. That's yeah. the same one I try to do. The only thing that really let me down was switching the left hand. As soon as I couldn't use my right, it was a big setback. Mm-hmm. You had dialitis, didn't you? Or dialitis and injury, a bit of both. I kind of got up, started to get over the dialitis and then started to hurt when I'd injured to some ligaments in my elbow. Mm. And then with dialitis, you get a snatch now and again, and that just upset that. Yeah, it it work, yeah. yeah, so it was uh, three years to hit the board and another six to be an 80 average player. So just to be able to play that count year was another six. You, you, what, lefty? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's not like, good. Yeah, no, I had a couple of nineties. I had three tons in pub darts last year over the night, but like most of my games were sort of mid seventies to low eighties. You know, most of the time. Well, but, I'm, uh, I'm still looking for the um, Ronnie O'Sullivan of darts. I'm <laughs> to go left or right, depending on where they are on the boards. I'm going for it. <laughs> yeah. Just switch left handed for double ten stuff like that. It'd Just, be awesome, wouldn't it? It'd be cool. I'm not awful lefty. I used to do it um, practicing for county. I used to take someone else's darts and I'd go trouble 20, trouble 20 and throw the last dart left. If I've nice. already got two in there, <laughs> then it's easier to do anyway. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't feel I can throw lefty anymore. I used to be able to see that. Uh, that would be a good exhibition shot, though. I'd, be, I'd love to see that. I, I think Lewis can do lefty. I've got a funny feeling Adrian Lewis can do left-handed. Yeah, I'm not surprised he could do most things, can he, with a dart? He can, yeah. He's a really scary, good. scary broke when he's on it. Yeah, nice guy as well. Yeah, he seems lovely. I've never I've talked to him personally, though he's one of the ones I haven't come across yet. But so I was just watching an interview the other day. He's like, How are you playing? He's like, I've had a few nines today. Huh? A few nines today. Like, yeah, uh, just stupid stuff. That's a good stupid one. But how many nines do you hit on practice? I think. I'm on 18 or 19 in practice now. I thought you'd have been a lot more than that, to be honest with you. No, no, no. I, I've never, I, I missed the double for one for the first time in a game the other week. I went 180, so, yeah, 171, I went three treble 19s. Then I went treble 19, treble 19, just missed a double 18. Oh, man. Is but that just including playing people in practice or not just throwing at the ball then? I, I've never hit one against someone, ever. What? Ever. Ah. It's written in the stars. It's going to be on TV, your first one. Yeah, but I've, I've done the... I've, my my favourite one, I've done a, a modus practising. I went one, 180, 171 with a free trouble, not aims, three balls. That's really awesome. And that, that was that was my favourite one. And no one no one saw. I, I, saw, I was like, did you want to see that? And they were like, what? What are you on about? I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll shut up with that in the corner. <laughs> No, cheapers. No, I, th- I genuinely thought you'd have had a lot more, huh? because you are so good at it, you know? Yeah, I've had two in a day. That was good. But I, awesome, I, I might be wrong. I might have, I might have hit more, but in my head, I, I, I don't think I've gone past 20 yet. I don't think. That's class, man. Still class, that, isn't it? Yeah, but, it's, uh, just, it's still not bad. I mean, I suppose it's different as well, because it depends on how many... It's one thing to say you've only hit, like, 18, 20 of them. But it depends how many times you've tried to do it. You know, yeah. if you if you're spending ninety percent of your practice switching around the board and switch going for nineteens and eighteens as well, then it's going to be much harder to do. I mean, I'm I'm not one of those people that plays a game looking for them. For me, I first really got introduced to you at the Modus League. That was that's when I really started. I I've, I heard of, I've heard of you, seen a couple of things on YouTube pop up. Your throw has changed massively, though I noticed. Since then, yeah, hugely. I mean, you're definitely a technique buffing because uh, it's I'm much more finished. Yeah, I mean, where the left eye dominance coming, I used to pull my dart over here, sort of like a Bobby George thing. When did you change I, that? Um, I changed a little while ago. I mean, it was probably the same sort of time I stopped using the unicorn darts and went to a Simon Whitlock dart. Right, yeah. I, I put. I, just, mm-hmm. I thought to myself, well, why would I pull in over there and like every now and again go in the one or release too early, go in the five? I was like, well, if I just pull back, touch my face here, it's a straight line. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Makes sense. It took me months. It took me, took me months to make it a natural thing, but that, that's what a lot of people don't, I don't think they realise that if you, 
it won't happen like in like the first hour or whatever, yeah. unless you're really lucky. It's pulling back, like just doing that, touching your face, or whatever. So I've got a biting point if I'm struggling. Yeah. And if I'm not struggling, it's a straight line anyway. It's just a natural straight line. It's easy to do. There's no like I'm not twinging my arm or anything trying to keep my arm straight. It's just nice and easy to do. Literally, but like I just my motto: the less you do, the less I can go wrong. Yes. Keep it simple, stupid. Correct. Kiss. Kiss. Yeah, simple words to live by. Definitely. Mm-hmm. See, so many complicated throws, and then they wonder why they're not consistent. It's like your throw is so busy. It's going, your yeah. elbow's going up, it's going down, your arm is turning, your wrist is twisting. It's like you, you can't do all those little things right all the time. The, the yeah. only thing that I have wrong in my finger, but it's a completely natural thing, is I go like that before I throw my dart. And I think that is literally, you know, Phil Taylor used to do a little thing like that before he threw. Very, yes, very slight. Really a long time ago, but yeah. I think that's a left eye dominant thing. Because I don't do, I don't go like that on purpose and then switch. Like, it's really strange. Like, you watch the videos or whatever, and I, I twist my hand straight. Yeah, like, it's not a thing. thing. Right? It goes to his nose and then to his eye. Taylor used to do this kind of thing. Like you yeah. Say. I, yeah. I think, I I think it's just a natural thing if you're left eye dominant. Yeah. It's it's uh, bizarre, but I think the eye dominance you can. It's I think it affects a small. It's one in three people that I uh, that I've coached have been opposite eye dominant, and I would say only about thirty percent, forty percent of them has made a difference. But yeah. to an even smaller number of that, about ten percent of that, it's made a huge difference. I mean, literally, they changed the game. I, you know? I mean, I've I've tried doing the standing side on to try and introduce my eye a little bit more to like the center line and stuff like that, but it doesn't. It's not consistent enough for me. So I've, I've, I've almost turned into more of like a field player of late. Yeah. So it just it I, you can I can feel it if I'm playing well I, I can feel what I'm doing right and I can like it's it's really strange like I, I can see I'm I'm fine but yeah. go going to there like it's all all see, that with both eyes then as well I think it'd be yeah. a field player yeah I totally yeah, think yeah. that's the best way to be it's it's sort of it's it's almost. I went to Spec Savers the other week, and my left eye is actually now weaker than my right eye. Same. But, it, but it's still dominant. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's because the dominance used to do with your coordination, not actually the strength of the eye, yeah, yeah. which is something people get confused with as well. So the Mordis League, you started doing really well on that. I mean, I want a few quid, I'm not going to lie. You did, you did particularly well. But going then to Leakside... And then on to the Pro Tour. Which one had the most pressure? And how did you kind of... How was it going from all of these massive tournaments, massive events within 12 months? Um, I wouldn't say anything really carried a lot of pressure. I mean, I I messed up Lakeside Royally. Mm. Like, that was that, that affected me for uh, a long, a long while. I don't. I, it didn't. No, it wasn't even like the forefront of my mind. But I think now it's been almost a year since then. I can sort of think in the back of my mind. I think it niggled me a little bit. I was bookie's favourite, playing someone that not a lot of people have heard of. I I hadn't really heard of him either. Sean Burr, who's he's a great dart player. Is it? Is it a nine dart? I think it was at the Klondike Open years ago. Nice. So he, he can definitely play the game. Um, yeah. And uh. That happened. I went about the day completely wrong. I didn't have a throw on the stage bef- like before I played that game. So the darts I threw was the only time I got a throw on the stage on the day. And that's when- I didn't turn up early enough. I I was on in the evening, and it it carries through the whole day sort of thing. It wasn't. It's not the organisers' fault or anything. It's my own fault for not. I, I should have planned it a lot better. I travelled up on the day because it was only forty five, maybe an hour from me. From where I live, so it, it not that long of a journey. But yeah. in hindsight, we would have stayed there overnight, sort of thing. Got a feel for the place, had a throw on the stage. It's, it's so stuff like that is wonderful when you got hindsight for it. But I, I don't, I don't think I've been the same since. But um, I, I think the next little version of me this year should be a lot better, a lot less thinking, a lot more doing, hopefully. 
And that was my next question. What's next for Connor Scott? A lot less thinking, a lot more doing. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm always one of the people in the room that I practice with everyone. Like we'll play, I'll play practice game. Everyone, they go, hey, you're, you're really, really good at this. Like you, you're really good. At, like, I play GG Mavers. We play tons. I love playing tons. Um, Great game. Exactly. I, I, I think I went one eighty, one eighty, one forty, one eighty, one eighty. Like just, just, just some stupid Personal, stuff. I did love playing tons. I don't like playing tons with you. <laughs> no, but I, 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 I'm, I'm good at it. It's, it's really strange. Like, I'm good at that game. That's why I always say to people, I'm sure to play tons. Yeah. If you want to jump down the tons. But then the yeah. games start, and I start thinking, and it's gone. Yeah. So this season, I, just, play it. I find it, it kind of. I'll find it helps me mimic the feel of the game because it's different yeah. just throwing at a board and trying actually trying to achieve something on the board. You know, implementing your throw when you're just concentrating on your technique rather than mm. is not the same as when you're trying to hit a target at the same time under any sort of pressure, even if it's a tiny bit of pressure. It's not the same. No, no, not at all. It's it's, it's trying to no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. Yeah. I think that's that, that's a saying you can use for that sort of stuff. Like you go into it thinking, I'm scoring really heavy. Like this is going to be really good. I'm, it's going to be a really good game. No, no, it's not. That just that little intrusive fault goes. Yeah, but what about if you miss? <laughs> and the whole thing just goes. Yeah. Totally. But no, my, my my goal for this year is just to be a bit stop being so nice. I'm far too nice a lot of the time. Like. You'd never think it because I, I I get a proper moody face when I'm playing. Sometimes I go with proper like scrunch face, but um I, I I need to be a lot more like right. I'm winning this. I'm doing that. I'm doing like just a lot more. Make make it more about me. Hungry. Yeah, the hung, oh, hungry. More 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 confident. Stop stop worrying about everything. Everything you're just there to throw darts. That's what Brian says to me all the time. He said. All we got to do is throw ups. That's all we got to do. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of everything else. All we got to do is just throw ups. Well, that's an awesome oh. bit of support. Yeah, that's exactly what you need. Yeah, exactly. If, 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 if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have my tour card. I, I just, I, I wouldn't. Because it was, it was even the first day of Q school when I got it. I was playing Nick Fullwell. Yeah, half half decent game. Nick, Nick spanked me. He used to be and, awesome, Nick. Yeah, he still is. Still is a good player, but. Yeah, yeah, he's got his tour card still. Damn, see, I haven't heard him for ages. But yeah. I didn't keep up with a lot of the smaller games last year, to be honest, because I was just so busy. But, um, mm. yeah, no, I remember I used to, what, used to play uh, your BDO system, didn't he? Going back about yeah, he did. 10 years ago. Yeah. He was, I think it was a British Open or something. I was like, um, he, yeah, he's, he's got his, his first year of same as me. He got his tour card and I got mine. That's awesome, man. But, I mean, I, I played him a smashed me and Brian said you're standing to the left again so right got it so after that day I was just paying a lot more attention to Brian and it got better and better and better and better it's like this is this, this is it this 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 is the year one tour card I cried bad bad times uh, you know that uh darts ranking uh website yeah so I was on that on the last day. I see, see my points and my name was in light green and I was like, right, so I've got to wait for that to go dark green so I know. And I think I played Dave. Oh, what's his name? No, no, no. No, uh, from, from up north, Dave. His second Prince? gives him an L. No, second name gives him an L. Old, old school player. Dave Ladley. Ladley. Okay. Dave Ladley. Never, never felt more nervous in my life. Just snuck that game, and then I played Thomas Lovely, and I was so relaxed that game. I, I had one ninety left at one point. I went sixty, sixty, thirty eight to leave thirty two. When he was on a, he was on like a ten plus finish, but a gettable one, like a one oh nine or one ten. He just missed. I hit the thirty two, and like my, my, I was just so confident that game. And as soon as I won that game, I sat on the table. Name went dark green. That was it. Stuck on. So. Yeah, I would. I think it's just there's nine cards. It seems impossible when you go there, surely. You know, it's just nine cards are for grabs. That's mental. Yeah. I mean, mental. I, I, 
it, it was the only year where I really, really fancied my chances. I had one good year before that where I, I had a bit of a run on the last day, didn't do anything for the others. The year before this one, the other, it was in COVID, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think my granddad passed away a couple of days before Q school started. Yeah. I, I went there. I got to phase two, luckily enough, after a good run on the first day. Um, but it just wasn't, I, I wasn't there. Wasn't yeah. there? It doesn't matter how well you're practicing either. So I was, I was practicing really, really well, really, really well. I knew I knew I was playing well, but when it comes to the games, it just wasn't there. That's fair. Yeah, it is. That is that so much between the years. No, yeah, of course it is. And people say, uh oh, some people are just naturally talented and stuff." I don't think it's a natural talent half the time. Like hand-eye coordination, I think it is mainly just being naturally confident, or naturally just all I've got to do is just go like that. A lot yeah. of times, the funniest people in the room are going to be the best players. Yeah. The people that are so relaxed. You see it all the time. That one table, like on a pro tour or somewhere, they're all having a laugh and a joke and they all get go on amazing runs. There's a lot of my audience, all right? They're, 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 they're there to improve that. They're there to try and develop themselves. And some of them are real beginners or people who play for years and just have never improved because they never understood the game properly. They've just stood there throwing darts and you can't get better like that. It might be, you just can't. Winning your first tournament. For me, it was, a, even though it was a tiny little event, it meant the world to me. And it changed me as, as, a, as a player, drastically, overnight. How did you go about doing it? What obstacles did you have to go overcome? Oh, I tell you, my first, my first little one was probably like a pairs comp or something silly like that. Like, no, nothing big. But my first proper singles win was... Probably the one that's on YouTube. It was the oh, where is it? Bishops for Road. Some it used to be called St Peter's Bishops for Road competition. You uh, throw Christmas it so coming. different then as well. I watched that back. It's mental. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was mad. I, I I played some good players that day as well. But that was it. That 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 was my that. It, I wouldn't say it changed me much because I don't go to a lot of competitions and win them. I don't, but that's that's more my mental thing of just not being that confident. That's what I was going to get at because surely it's for me. It was when I first started playing events. I mean, small events. Winning mm. the first round was a nightmare. I know. I still think to this day the first round's the hardest. The the yeah. like the finals, the second hardest. You know, it's like final is easy. I honestly, when I'm in a final, I just relax. I'm like. I'm in a final. There's nothing to go wrong. There's, there's nothing. Could I could lose a final. That's fine. I've got to the final. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I, think, yeah. I think that's where I need to change this year and just be a lot more just ruthless, more confident in myself rather than just being Mr. Nice Guy all the time. Well, that's what I want to see. One game at a time. Keep your head straight and just go with it. Take yeah, your chances. If you take your chances, you're going to win. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I've got to do this year. That's all I've got to do. I totally mean, I... Really. I I, I put more time in than a lot of other people, so it's got to pay off. It has to. To. <laughs> I've never heard of anyone practicing eight hours a day. You must be one of the hardest workers in the game if to play that I, long. I, I think I think I'm up there. I think I'm up there with them. I mean, obviously, people do a lot more travelling and stuff than I do, so they they could be classed as hard workers. But I don't think a lot of people put as much sort of. I've on never. Their heard, own. I've never heard of eight hours a day. The like, Stopping for food and stuff, or just making sure I've got like I've got a two litre bottle of water that I normally have in here with me, sort of thing. So I don't have to stop much for getting a drink and that sort of stuff. A lot of people say I practice too much, but no, I do enjoy few. it. I wake up in the morning and want to practice. I'll, I'll have days off sometimes where I only yeah. do like two, three hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a day off. It's true as well. That's the worst thing about it. I mean, oh my I'm... gosh. Your head must I, be spinning I, with dark stuff. My honestly, I'd I'd fry my brain. Do you listen I, to audio books or something? Any like anything at all like that? I I watch some YouTube stuff that are normally darts interviews. Like when the PDC put up like one of their interviews, like sort of the John Part one that's just come out. I've stuck yeah. stick something on like that, or like the Chris Mason one. I know you're a tinkerer with your throw. Like we were talking about the grip before, uh, and we did yeah. you try that grip in the end? I I, I made a little video for you. I did, didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> for, for, for me, my you see the 
bit of my finger there with the bend in it. Yeah. My dart, my dart rests in that. So I know that I'm gripping it the same every time. So it's almost like a little comfort blanket. Yeah, yeah. So when that's right, touch my face. So it's it's just things that you can feel and mimic all the time. That's one yeah. of the things I'd say to people that can't work something out. Do something that works once and just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again the same until you get bored of it. That's all that's all getting good about is find finding something that works. When you hit a sixty, just copy it. Even yeah. if even if even if you copy it and it's not quite the same, it's still really close. Yeah. No, fair enough. It's not bad advice. I think with the grip especially, you can't coach the grip. That's what I've always said that you cannot tell anyone to grip a dart a certain way. Because there's Wait. so many exceptions to the rule. But there are rules I, within the grip that you can coach. I, mean, I, I used to use so I used to use that, which is an Elka dart, just a straight yeah. barrel dart, no scallop in it, nothing. And I used to hold it like that. You must have spun that dart like a maniac throwing it like that. I did, uh, but now I hold like that. And I bet that's a lot more stable and doesn't spin the dart off as much. And that it might be better. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. It is a better grip, far superior. That's been absolutely awesome, Connor. I think that's been, uh, it's got to be useful. Actually, l- listening to someone who hasn't got natural ability, started huh? a fairly young age, at 14, it's fairly young. I mean, you get younger these days, but um, I think I was only 16 when I started taking it fairly proficiently serious, you know? So it's um, to go from having no natural ability. To win in local comps, to go to the Motors League, to go to Q School, to play in Lakeside, and then to get in amazing results in the last few Pro Tours. Only the last few, to be fair to you. I know your head I was right. Yeah, I, but my, my third ever Pro Tour, my second ever Pro Tour of the year, I made a board final. My third one, I made the semi final. But then. A few months after Lakeside happened, and I wasn't the same. And it's just got it's taken me till now to yeah. get that game back a little bit more. No, that's amazing. I mean, it's, it's all about bouncing back in this sport as well. Hmm. There's no point doing something good once you've got Peaks to bounce back. Peaks so, and trust, and the peak will always be higher than the trough. Definitely. Excellent advice. So I wish you all the best for next season. I'm going to put all the list of your sponsors up on the screen. I do ask you, everybody man. takes a good look at them. It's re- I think it's really important. We always try and look at the services sponsors provide for up-and-coming talent. Exactly. Because without them, the game doesn't grow. It doesn't. And without, without the people that I have backing me and supporting me, yeah, I'm not here, basically. Thank okay. you very much, mate. Absolutely fine. It's been awesome talking to you. Thank you for watching my channel. And thank you for That's coming right. on. It's been awesome. Thank you very much for having me. Perfect. There we go. Take care, Mr. Connor Scott. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching Straight to the Point. Please remember to like and leave a comment. And as always, subscribe if you love the darts.